What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Geared Inc, where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And on my channel, that's PC Tech Games and Gear. And today we are doing kind of a budget APU build list. I've been asked to kind of do something like this multiple times and I want to kind of show what my thought process is when I'm going through and picking parts for a PC. Now this is going to be built around an APU and I thought, why not do it around the giveaway that I'm doing, the 2400G, as that's probably the best entry level um, you know, point for people who are trying to get into gaming or you know esports gaming but they can't afford the current GPU prices because we have no idea when those are going to go down or what's going to be available there's so many rumors flying around right now it's giving me like literally heartburn but as far as we go uh, with these kind of builds I usually have three things in mind when I pick out PC parts I want it to be overclockable I want it to be upgradable and I want to be non-replaceable so what I mean by that is I want to make sure that everything that I get I'm not going to have to replace later for the most part now, as far as the uh, kind of the pieces that I'm going to use, I'm going to use PC Part Picker, so let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so the website that I'm going to be using to do this is the Old Faithful PC Part Picker. Um, obviously, these prices may vary depending on what country you're on, uh, in. I'm in the United States, but this is just to give you an example of kind of what parts may go well if you're trying to do an entry-level APU build while we wait for GPU prices to come down or if you're waiting to essentially uh, just kind of wait out this entire year because we have no idea when that's actually going to happen. So I've already picked out parts, um, but I'm going to explain my picks so you guys understand kind of my mentality. So I had a couple of goals for this build. I wanted it to be upgradable, I wanted it to be overclockable, and I absolutely wanted to make sure that you're, everything that you're picking right now you're not going to have to replace later. So the first thing we went with was the 2400G. This is a great 4-core, 8-thread processor, and the specific reason I picked it over the 2200G is because it does have more threads. Now, this has the gaming performance of roughly like a 1030 GT, which is not amazing, but it will allow you to play pretty much any esports title at medium to high settings, so that is something um, that's very good for you know someone who's thinking about a budget build. You don't have to pick a CPU cooler, it comes included with one, so it's not something you have to worry about. Now for the motherboard, I spent a little bit more money because I wanted to make sure that I had enough DIMM slots if I wanted to add more RAM. So this does have four DIMM slots, meaning you will be able to upgrade. It's also a B350 uh, motherboard, so that means that you can overclock everything on it, which is extremely important because I wanted to make sure that that functionality um, was retained with whatever build we were doing. Now for memory, I'm going with the very um, tried and true Corsair Vengeance LPX. I'm only doing 8GB because we're trying to keep this build under $500 at least for now. Um, now understand something, because the APU does not have um, any you know, memory that is basically, uh, it's not like an actual graphics card. It takes it directly from your system memory, which would be this. So this might be a little, um, kind of pushing the edge a little bit for a little while, but it allows you to at least get the system up and running. I did all my tests with eight gigabytes of RAM and it was totally fine, but it also makes sure that you can add two more sticks later on because you do want to run it in dual channel with these APUs. If you run a single stick of RAM, there have been performance issues um, that people have been popping up on Reddit and things like that. Now, I'm going to omit an SSD, even though it does provide a lot of benefit in terms of load times for your OS and everything else. I'm going with more space, and the reason being is that this will allow you, regardless of how many games you have, to you know get everything uploaded for now, and then in a solid state drive is something that you can always add on later, and that will have a significant impact in terms of your performance on uh, you know your load times on games and with your operating system. Now, the case I decided to go with is the Cooler Master Lite 3.1. The reason I did this is it does come included with a case fan, but this is the uh, basically the case that I use for my wife's build. I absolutely love it. It's a great medium between cases that are too cheap and cases that are too expensive, and it's going to allow you to add up to three fans here in the front. It's also got um, fan support here, obviously for the back if you want to move that out. Um, there is no fan support in the top, so you're only going to be able to put three fans here in the front, one in the back, and then it has a hard drive tray which you can remove if you don't want it there. I personally removed it and just have it mounted to the bottom of the case. You can do whatever you want, but I, I think this is probably one of the best budget cases around. Now, the other thing is the PSU. We don't want to have to upgrade this, so I went with a 520 uh, 8D Plus Bronze Seasonic. This is a great power source, guys. It's also what I have in my wife's build. Right now, it's on sale for around $35. It's a great budget um, component because it is fully modular, meaning that you're not going to be, uh, in terms of cable management, you're not going to have to deal with ketchup and, you know, ketchup and mustard cabling, and you can only use what you need. And it is more than sufficient to do light overclocking. In my wife's system, I have a 1200 
um, Ryzen with a uh, 1050 Ti and 8 gigabytes of LPX RAM, the exact same kit that I showed on here. All of it's overclocked, all of it runs just fine. So this allows you to basically build for less than $500, and that's including rebate, a system that you're going to be able to do entry-level gaming on. You can add a GPU to later on. You can add more RAM. You can add an SSD, and you don't have to worry about replacing any of these other components. So you're not losing out in terms of you're not having to worry, like, if I buy this now, am I going to have to just sell it all? Am I going to be wasting my money? Absolutely not. So you guys can figure out whatever configuration you want within this cost price, but this is something that if I was building, I would absolutely do. So guys, if you do win that APU, these are kind of some of the parts that maybe you would consider getting to kind of complement that. Or obviously if you've already bought in parts then just and you win the APU, more power to you. But I wanted to make this because people have been asking me for like a budget build. And this is exactly something that I would personally do if I was doing it myself. Now you'll notice that we could have shaved off some money on the case, we could have shaved off some money on the RAM, definitely on the motherboard, it could have got it for maybe 20 bucks less. But I didn't want to have to replace anything for a while and this makes it so you don't have to. Alright guys, so that is basically what my kind of thought process is when I pick parts and you'll notice like I said, it's not that I was necessarily trying to get the very very cheapest component because sometimes spending a little bit more to have a little better quality is a better you know, value than saving five bucks here or five bucks there. But it really just depends. In this situation, I liked all my picks. If you didn't though, feel free to leave comment down below on kind of what you would have done differently. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, leave me a big thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and leave me a thumbs down. But get subscribed. Big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I can't tell you how much, um, I, like how excited I am to see that. Thank you to everyone who continues to support my channel. If you're not already entered in the giveaways going on, they're all down in the description below. And outside of that, guys, um, next giveaway goal is 7,500 by 2018. Let's continue to drive forward. I can't uh, tell you how excited I am um, to be doing what I'm doing, and I can't wait to share or continue to share my passion with you. We hope to see you next time here on Gear Dink.